Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with another weekly video, blog, and tip on creating an indoor space that really supports your health and wellness. This week I'm going to take you to some of the unseen places in your house. I'm a home inspector in Minnesota and I get to see these spaces all the time. And What I started to see when I first started out was a pattern that a lot of times there's a door on some of these areas in our home like our basement, a crawl space, a utility room, or our attic. And so we don't go in and we don't look around. And what can happen is there can be a lot of unseen problems that we have no idea about. Eventually the problems turn into things that make our home unhealthy, um, things that cost us a lot of money. And these are things we want to avoid. A lot of times the trick to avoiding these things is just to know what to look for and take a peek every once in a while. So this week's video is based on a blog that I wrote. If you are someone who likes to read the blog, click on the links, um, then I would encourage you to go to the blog post, which I have linked in the description below. If you're someone who really likes just a quick visual, then we will go through some slides um, that are based on this week's blog post and you can get all the information you need. So you might be in the boat where there are spots in your house that you haven't checked in a really long time. And it's actually quite a common thing, especially if you don't have a great way to access some of these spaces. But one thing that I've learned as both a home inspector and a homeowner is that if there's one important maintenance thing, it has to do with attics, basements, and other unseen spaces in the home. And when you miss out on even taking a peek in these spaces, um, you miss some big red flags and warning signs that something is going on with your home making it unhealthy. One of my biggest pieces of advice is to at least look in these places. You don't even have to visit them on a regular basis. Just a peek with a flashlight is all you need. It could mean the difference between finding a potential problem and finding a full-blown disaster. So one of the biggest things that we have to watch for in these unseen spaces is moisture and potential moisture intrusion. Keeping water out of your home wherever you can is the biggest way to prevent problems. And home maintenance will often be about preventing moisture in these unseen spaces of our home. Another quick tip before we dive into each of these spaces that I'm gonna talk about is don't use them as storage if you can help it, or at least don't pack them full of storage. Make sure you're not just using the spaces to fill them up to the brim with things that need to be stored. While many of these spaces can hold some storage, they're actually functional spots in your home and need to be somewhat open for home maintenance and airflow. So we're gonna take a look at the attic first and most homes have an attic space that you can access. However, some homes may have finished the attic um, and therefore you won't be able to access any sort of open space that we typically refer to as an attic. Your attic may have stairs up to it um, or an access hatch or an access hatch with a ladder attached, kind of like um, in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. The attic is probably the place in our home we skip out on visiting the most unless there's something bringing you up there to take a peek around. Often it's dark with no lighting, not a great way to access the space, and so it's understandable why we avoid this area or forget about it all together. But the good news is usually the addict has the least amount of maintenance that needs to be done to the space in comparison to other areas around the house. The attic acts as a buffer between your living space and the outdoors, and it often contains insulation to help create a powerful thermal barrier between your home and exterior elements. Popping your head into the attic every six months to a year is a great idea. Truly all you need to do is grab a ladder, if you even need to, and a flashlight and stick your head inside the attic space. If you're kind of squeamish, you can actually just hold your camera on your phone above your head with either a flashlight or the flash on and take a video. And when you're safely back on the ground, you can look at it. 
When you're in the attic, I really recommend you wear a mask covering your nose and mouth to prevent you from breathing in any potential asbestos from insulation or fiberglass from insulation. And if you want to sh- if you don't want to shake out your hair afterwards, I suggest wearing a hat to protect you from insulation that's going to fall down. I've even gotten in the habit of putting down a drop cloth on the floor that will catch insulation that falls down so you don't have to vacuum. Um, so now the big question, what do you look for when you have access to your attic space. Besides moisture intrusion, um, the other three things that you want to look at are the first one is going to be evidence of animals, rodents, or insects. And this is probably the biggest reason most of us avoid the attic. No one wants to come face to face with anything that's made a home inside the attic. But to be honest, this is more rare than you think. If your eaves around your house are sealed properly without big gaps or rotting wood, rodents, animals, and insects generally won't be able to get into your attic space. Um, Simply check around for evidence of burrowing in the insulation, which can indicate rodents. You'll also want to check to make sure you don't see wasps nests or other insect homes around the corners of the or around the peaks. Um, If you see any droppings from animals or insects, you'll want to do some maintenance to the exterior to seal up your space and then some maintenance to the inside of your space to get rid of your visitor. Um, You can either DIY this or call in a professional. The next thing that you wanna take a look at or watch for is daylight showing. Um, When you look into your dark attic, are you seeing daylight peeking through around vents or around joint connections? Because if you see more light coming through than just the main part of a passive vent, you want to have the area sealed up. A spot where daylight can poke through without a screen means that insects, animals, or moisture can come through where it's not supposed to. I often see these spots around the vents of the side of the attic called gable vents and around chimney terminations into the roof. So this is where the chimney meets the roof line. Um, If you notice, or you can easily... You can easily take care of this maintenance yourself or with a handyman by sealing these spots with an exterior caulking and then continue to monitor them. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is improper insulation and venting. So if you notice that the insulation has settled or if you feel a draft coming from your attic access door, it might be time to add insulation around that spot. Either way, an adequate amount of insulation is necessary and should be included in home maintenance to keep a proper thermal barrier intact around the attic space. You wanna make sure that all the vents are unblocked and intact Vents are often within the eaves of our homes, and so you may see like a plastic baffle or kind of like a chute that keeps the vent open and free from insulation along the sides of your attic. You want to make sure that these haven't fallen down, and if they have, you want to make sure that it is not blocked by insulation. Adequate ventilation in your attic space is a huge part of maintaining a healthy house. So let's move on to the basement. Um, Some homes may not even have a basement, depending on where you live in the country. I live in Minnesota, where basements are pretty much in every home. If you don't have a basement, you likely have some sort of crawl space where the plumbing can run for your home. Um, Your basement could be completely finished. It could be unfinished. It could be used as a, as like storage or utility area. But either way, even if you have like a small corner of your basement that's left unfinished or left for storage, it's a good idea to have a look around now and then. And we're going to talk about what to look for when we are in the basement um, in terms of maintenance. So there's four things. The first thing we're going to talk about is moisture. Again, home maintenance can sometimes revolve around moisture and moisture prevention. And in the basement, moisture can mean condensation on concrete or stone walls, or it could mean moisture entering through cracks and spots where water from the outside of your home makes its way inside. Um, And so we want to watch for these. Condensation on your walls in the basement can usually be fixed with some waterproof barrier paint that you can get at a hardware store. You can do this on both the exterior and interior of your foundation walls and it will help prevent moisture in the future. If you 
notice water coming in cracks or seams between floors and walls, you need to seal those up with caulking first and then add the waterproof barrier. Um, before you do your home maintenance, you want to try and find some low VOC or zero VOC caulking and paint, which I have linked in this week's blog post for you. Um, some great options. The next thing we're going to talk about is if you smell a musty odor in your basement. Um, basements are in general kind of musty smelling. Um, if it's a little musty, it's an indication that there's high humidity levels in the space. And one thing we know about both home maintenance and maintaining a healthy space is that we want lower humidity levels inside. So high humidity levels often invite mold, mildew um, to enter our space as well as insects like a lot of moisture. So high humidity levels can encourage materials with VOCs to off gas as well. And they'll off gas at a much higher rate in comparison to when they're in a dry climate. So you can try to hunt for moisture entering your space and take care of the problem by sealing and waterproofing the walls. You can also add a dehumidifier to your basement, which will pull moisture out of the air on a regular basis as the basement can be just more of a damp place in your home. You might also want to consider removing carpet from the floor if you have it and replacing it with the hard surface flooring. This is really going to help moisture from being continuously absorbed and sticking around in your space. Next thing we want to watch for are new foundation cracks. So if you have exposed foundation walls in your basement or crawl space, you'll want to keep an eye on cracking that may appear. Regular home maintenance is to fill any cracks that appear over time, and it's completely normal to have hairline cracks here and there that do not worsen. If you notice a crack worsening or a new one that is larger than a hairline crack, it might be time to call in a professional just to give it a good assessment. The best way to prevent cracking from your foundation wall is to keep moisture away on the outside of your home. Some quick maintenance tips to prevent this are make sure that your gutters are clean and draining at least six feet away from your foundation. You can also make sure that grading around your home is sloped away from your home to allow proper drainage. You can make sure that vegetation is not growing directly next to the foundation walls outside and ensure that there's a bit of a buffer space between plants and vegetation. The outside home maintenance can prevent a lot of problems from happening on the inside of your home and it can keep you from experiencing big problems in the future as well. And the last thing we're going to talk about is flooring. So most basements have a concrete floor either exposed or underneath a layer of flooring. If you have a crawl space, you may even have a dirt floor. So dirt floors should be covered with a barrier layer. A lot of times this is a plastic sheet to prevent moisture and gases from entering the home naturally through the dirt. If you have an exposed concrete floor, you'll also want to check for that same cracking that I mentioned with your foundation walls. And you can check for like a general damp feeling on the concrete, which can indicate moisture entering your space through the concrete. If you have carpet, I like to pull up the corners of the carpet every now and then and check to see if any maintenance is in order to take care of moisture intrusion around the edges. I always think it's best to keep carpet out of the basement if we can, as it can just be a naturally damp space. But if you have it, just continue to check the flooring for moisture. And now on to the third area, we're going to look at the utility room. So typically, um, a home will have a space that is devoted to utilities. Sometimes it's in a basement, sometimes it's a closet. Um, you might have just a corner of the basement. You might have um, them in your garage or a closet outside. Typically, if there's a room devoted to utilities, you probably won't be visiting it very often. Um, and so you have to really think about the maintenance that has to be done. These rooms can get forgotten about, and unfortunately, they can have problems that arise without us even knowing it. So one tip that I really like to tell people is you can either leave the door to the utility room open as a reminder to check in every now and then, or you can add a calendar reminder to replace your filters in your furnace or AC, and it's a good reminder to go in and do a visual check. So what do we need to look for in the utility room? First and foremost, because it has all of our utilities, we want to look at venting. So venting from appliances that use natural gas like furnaces, water heaters, should be completely sealed with no holes and no worn areas. If you notice a hole or an area that is either worn um, or open, in any place, that means that combustion gas can escape into your home. You'll want to call someone to repair it right away. 
the gas that is expelled from the heating process in these home appliances, like I said, is called combustion gas and should be carried directly out of your home. Some newer appliances actually use PVC piping for this rather than metal venting. And this is a safer option. When gas is allowed to seep back into our space, we can be exposed to carbon monoxide, which is extremely dangerous and can be deadly because we don't notice it and it doesn't have an odor. Um, the next thing we want to check is the furnace and boiler. So if you have a furnace, it's a great excuse to head to your utility room to change your furnace filter. Other than that, there isn't too much to check on except to make sure that the appliances are working and that there are no leaks from condensate lines or piping. So just a quick visual check of these two should suffice. I also like to recommend getting a tune-up every two years to ensure that the appliances are in fact working well and that there are no problems going unnoticed. I think it's better to to be preventative here than to wait until there's a problem. So do you know where your main water valve is? Because I think so many times it's hidden in a closet somewhere or in a place that doesn't get checked very often. And you'll wanna make sure you know where the valve is and then keep an eye on it every few months to make sure there are no leaks present. Because at the first sight of any sort of drip or leak from the valve, you'll want to call and get it repaired. Essentially, the valve will never magically start getting better. And you don't want to wait until you have a bigger problem on your hands and have to turn water off to your whole house at an inconvenient time to do the repair. And the last thing that we want to look at is the water heater. So some people drain their water heater once a year. Others just leave them. Personally, I think it depends on your water quality. And so for our family, we just let ours work without bothering it. If you have extremely hard water with no water conditioner system, you may want to look into this option of draining it. Otherwise, in general, you just want to keep an eye on the venting for your water heater and make sure there's no discharge coming from any of the drains or valves. The venting should be completely intact with no holes. Disconnections or worn areas, just like the furnace, need to be addressed. And finally, if you see water coming out of your water heater underneath, it's time to start shopping for a new one and getting it replaced. You don't wanna wait until this becomes a big headache. It's much better to deal with it right away when there's a small leak, um, as opposed to when it's not working at all. So creating a healthy house includes the bones and systems within the home too, which can sometimes be forgotten. By keeping an eye and keeping up on home maintenance, just visually checking at some of these big unseen spaces in your home, you can protect your space and protect your family. If you want more information or links to anything that I mentioned here, click the link at the end of my video description and you'll be brought to this week's blog post. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and going through this week's blog post in a video format. I hope you're able to take away some useful information that can apply to your own home. Now, not all of these spaces are going to apply to every single home. It depends on where you live in the country. It depends on what style of home you have but most of us will have at least one of these spaces that we can really keep an eye on. So until next week, I hope you are well, and I'll be back with another weekly tip on creating an indoor space that supports your health and wellness.